Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to episode 14 of the Ghost of Salt Marsh. Uh, last time you guys explored the underground, like hidden uh, passageways below this burned down abbey on this island. Um, you found a lot of undead, some traps, just a few, uh, a false treasure room full of wooden coins that were painted to look like gold. Uh, and a secret door behind a strong box, and as Minstrel checked it over for traps, he heard muffled voices from the chamber beyond. A man pleading to be taken away, and a woman arguing that he'd gone too far and would suffer the consequences of his actions. Minstrel threw the door open and let fly with a wild crossbow bolt, uh, hitting the woman in the shoulder, before realizing that it was Zendris' second-in-command, Lilac, the purple tiefling that Fel had once lost a lot of money to. No regrets. Um, <laughs> tense conversation ensued, uh, revealing that Lilac had come for Gelen's wealth because it had been gained by pillaging her land and exploiting her people, according to her, and that the abbot had indeed been uh, responsible for the deaths in the abbey by summoning something that he couldn't control in his uh, devotion to use, uh, Lord of the Abyss. Lilac teleported away before anyone could stop her, leaving the abbot in your hands. Upon discovering that he'd been shipwrecking people on purpose, causing fog and storms so that he could loot their ships as offerings to his owl temple, Ashara snapped his neck in a fury that soon gave way to anguished sobs, while Fel simmered about Zentris's possible connection to what transpired here. So, as you all left that room, agreeing to head back to your ship and return to Salt Marsh as soon as possible, Minstrel remained behind uh, to put a bolt through the priest's head. And Minstrel alone, you see as the priest's flesh begins to bubble and burst, a black necrotic energy boiling from it before consuming it entirely. And you hear faint, hungry whispers in a language you don't recognize kind of echoing in the small stone chamber as the priest disappears before everything falls still and silent with the body nowhere to be found. So I assume you guys make your way back through all these traps towards the abbey proper, the living quarters. Minstrel definitely believes that his bolt to the head did that. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, see, ma, got to double tap those things. <laughs> Is there? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we're looking for a cart. So you come back to the Abbey proper. There were um, provisions and you know odds and ends lying around that you could definitely take with you. Um, inside and around the Abbey, you don't remember seeing anything like that. But if you ask Ashara. Which I assume you do. Uh, sure. She will she will take you up into the fields where there are a couple of some of them in better shape than others. Um they didn't have to go far on this island. So um she kind of apologizes, but there there's one that's okay. And you think you can maybe load up most of the, the foodstuffs if you wanted. Definitely. Yep. Well, before you ask, I suppose I'll just volunteer to <laughs> be hitched up to this. <laughs> cool. Fair enough. Yeah, don't get if, into uh, this. Don't get too used to it. I thought <laughs> Aubergine would do it. <laughs> She's pretty strong. That's true, I Aubergine. I didn't mean to step on your toes Aubergine. there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Aubergine would still be a little bit too drunk. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want your cart just like careening all over. <laughs> Which the we have loaded up the alcohol that was there as well. I, I do believe that there was mention of some alcohol. There was there. a little bit. Most of the casks were empty, but um, some of the bottles, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we're we're putting all those. Uh, every every bottle of alcohol there is, we're putting in the cart to keep aubergine's whistle wet. All right, you you find ten <laughs> bottles of. Whatever local wine stuffs they had brewed. All right, so so feels like now aubergine. Remember that the, you have to keep these particular things. Uh, have them last. If it's if you like the wine, you have to make it last because the people who made it are all dead. So you're never gonna get more of it. 
This is this is ten bottles, and then when it's gone, you're out of of the wine. If it's trash, you know, that's that's fine. But uh, just make sure that if you enjoy it, you have to savor it. If it's trash, you know, then you, you can have you it. Could, you could also sell it. It could be worth a lot of money. They last ten bottles in existence. Yeah, they're never like a, like ever a... will there be any more. Yeah, that could be a selling point. Only a fool would pay money for that shit, Shara says. Oh, okay. Mistral well, looks over at Ashara and goes, you would not believe how many fools are in the world. <laughs> That's fair enough. I know quite a few that would probably pay a pretty penny for something so rare. Those are the buyer for everything. Look in all the right places. All right yeah. then. Um... Let's push this cart, right? <laughs> yep. So, actually, now that you've emerged from the ruined abbey and spent some time poking around the fields to, to find these carts, or this one that works okay, um, and then load it back up, bringing stuff up the cellar stairs through the busted door, um, you notice that the mist that seemed to have perpetually shrouded this island is gone. And from the abbey's vantage point, you can see glittering sea stretching off toward every horizon. The fuck, Ashara, was the was was this island always like shrouded in mist and shit, or or did that start recently? As long it's, as long it's... as I've been here, it it I mean the weather's notoriously bad around the island. That's why it's so dangerous. <sighs> well, what the fuck did we do that it's no longer? I mean, all we did was kill like a couple of statues and uh... Uh, the. The abbot said he did this, right? He it caused is. the mist is. to shipwreck ships and stuff. Oh, right, yeah. I, I don't remember. All I remember is um, I started kind of going, <coughs> you know, and uh, and then you, the, yeah, that was that was a nice work, by the way. Well, you didn't see what happened after that. What happened after? Well, when you all left the room, I. I put the bolt in his head, you know, because zombies on the island and all that. Oh, yeah. And then he, like, turned into this weird black goo. Oh. And then just disappeared. Hmm. Probably wasn't a good thing, but I definitely... I definitely caused that with the bolt. Yeah, for sure. Can I make, like, an intelligence check to find out if I would know if that bolt caused people to turn into black goose? Um... <laughs> sure. I mean, Minstrel is a pretty they, high. As far as Val knows, they totally do. <laughs> yeah, a, he might have a, a, that was a an special, 11. special bolt or something. Yeah. Oh, I, I would I would definitely keep hold of those for really particular situations. Don't want to be turning things into uh, to goop everywhere that we go. Or do we? I don't know. I think it freaked people out a little bit. Not to mention then, the water you know, pollution. They might leave us alone. You do that to one, and the rest will leave you. Uh, Intimidation factor, you know. Yeah, no, like I mean, if it was real scary, I mean, that's. Fine. I hear what this guy's saying. Messed up. It was pretty <laughs> messed up. Yeah. Um. Well. Uh. I guess we head back to the ship then. Um. Adadash, do you think you have the capacity to do this all by yourself through all those sand dunes? I mean, it seems like it's probably going to be a pain in the ass to move this cart. Uh, yeah, the sand makes me a little nervous, actually. It is yeah, fairly yeah. steeply downhill most of the way. Um, so I'll just get in the cart and ride it down the <laughs> hill. Yeah, if you need any help, just just let us know. Also, that's a really bad idea because uh, I mean, we, we send it rolling down the hill. How do we stop it? You know, next thing we know, we're just collecting all of our supplies out of a pile of you know rocks and well, is sea is there no path to the shore, Ashara? No, you know, wood or stone places to set my feet that are a little more stable. It's it's all sand. We never went down there for reasons that are obvious now, but it's the beach. Okay, I'll just be careful then. <laughs> well, um, I'm sure yeah. some of our stronger companions can push along with you. Mm. Uh, if nothing else, just to help keep it slow so it doesn't run you over. Sure, it's not the weight that I'm concerned about. It's a misstep. Could be very dangerous. I was waiting for somebody to say something. I mean, come on, look at me. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm uh, happy to help. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, by all means. You're that, just man. you're just so quiet. I forget how huge you are. Yeah, you can help Aubergine. <laughs> I feel yeah. like he can just pick the cart up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. You grab one. <laughs> I'll grab the other. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, if Aubergine needs any help, you know, <laughs> just get in there. Get um, Aubergine in the middle underneath, just pushing right up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh... I'm sure we'll figure something out. Right. Um, well, uh, if if all else is is fine, then let's get these supplies on the ship. And make sure our uh, our little family uh, is all right. We haven't seen a little bit in a while. Um, yeah. Um, Fel just sort of sets off, kind of doing like a sad peanut walk. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep. So you guys all um, start making your way back toward the Skull Dunes. Um, your ship is obscured from view until the grassy plains give way to the rolling sandy hills um, that stretch down to the beach um, as you make your way toward the south end of the island. Um, you know, the sand plus, you know, hooves and laden cart. The cart is heavy enough with all of this stuff. It, it kind of, it's not just going to go flying downhill. You get some traction. Um, just go ahead and make like a general strength check, I guess, to just stay in control. Strength or athletics? Uh, athletics is fine, sure. Uh, it's a twenty-two. Yeah. So you you watch your step. You take it slow. The group together as a whole manages to guide this heavy cart down to the shore. Now you do have one of your rowboats waiting for you, the fuck 'em up. I, I think don't... that was the bigger one. The fuck 'em up junior. <laughs> well, uh you know just by looking at it with, with all of you plus Ashara and all these goods, you're you're probably gonna need multiple trips to take everything back to the boat. Well, there's one less person you have to worry about. Cause I'm walking on the water. <laughs> <laughs> or if we want to just actually save a lot of space, hey, hey, Adash, you want to borrow this ring for a bit? I've always wanted to see a centaur walk on water. <laughs> oh, to tell you the truth, since I learned you had that, I've been trying not to ask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he hands you the ring. Does it need a tuning? Uh, no. Okay, Adidash will slip the ring on. And you, uh, as you step out into the the water, you you find yourself buoyant. It's just like, it feels really weird. It's like magical. You, it's like the forest, yeah. forest spirit in Princess Mononoke. <laughs> yeah, you, it's like you got styrofoam shoes on. <laughs> I mean, they're like hoof boats. It's great. Just like... This hmm. is... Well, this is neat. You may not get this ring back. <laughs> oh shit! That was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Okay, it, I don't. It's fine. <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's but fine? But I have much less anxiety about water now. This is well, that's, really that's cool. Good. We can get it back when she falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we uh, we're gonna get the uh, stuff moving, and as long as it takes. Okay, so you uh, set off Adidash on foot, the rest of you rowing um, with as many of the supplies as you... Uh, maybe like, like we can saddle a little bit of the supplies onto Adidash. Totally, yeah. yeah. Put some <laughs> Carry bags some, on me. Throw some bags over, sure. Uh, maybe about a third of them get loaded up in this first initial trip. Um, as you approach the, the bigger bit, you can make out Lyra up in the crow's nest. Um, the little flash of her spyglass as she looks down at you approaching um she climbs down while you come up alongside and lash the the boat up and get ready to start hoisting and climbing up um and she kind of peers over and greets you with a sunny smile hey welcome back and you have a new friend uh yeah a uh, little bit this here is shara shara this is the little bit namesake of our vessel the, the bigger bit, I noticed. 
Nice. Uh, hello. And she, she just climbs up easily off um, the rope hanging down by the ship and shakes Lyra's hand. And uh, yeah, the rest of you, you climb aboard and you kind of look around. Uh, Talon and Karen aren't aren't up on the main deck. Oh, and, and um, as he's introducing uh, a shard of things, like, well, you may not see them, but her parents are also on board. Uh, there's, um, God, what was his name? Uh, the, the stuffy one with the boating skills, and then the buff wife. So, uh... Lyra just kind of rolls her eyes. That's... Talon's my dad, and Karen's my mom, and they're in their room having sex. Oh, shit. Well, if the boats are rocking, you're either on the water, or they're having sex. <laughs> the boat wasn't rocking, though. They must be in a hammock. Uh, or maybe they're actually having sex at such force that's counteracting the rocking that the ship would have on the waves. Holy fuck. Well, this fuck. conversation has been a lot of fun. Uh... <laughs> so anyway, we should probably go get the next load of goods. Leave them yeah. to their um, <laughs> abilities. Their fornication, yes. Let's yeah, sure, get sure. Adidas can... just jumps off the side of the boat now that she knows she doesn't sink. Oh yeah, she hits it like a rock. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, and, and takes off running for the beach. Yeah. Okay, it, it actually, is like an eight you, foot drop. Uh, whenever you actually jump into the water, though, it you actually dive down and then come back to surface. So. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, that the ring forces you to the surface. It doesn't actually hit like a rock. She doesn't take fall damage. It just Not a, what I expected. <laughs> nice little splash. <laughs> You're back up and running. Um, Ashara stays up on deck to help Lyra. Um, lash the, the, you know, haul up the boat with your supplies in it, and they bring those aboard, send you guys back off. Um, well, we don't all need to go, but... Yeah, I was gonna say... Uh, yeah, p strong people, you go. <laughs> Fel's gonna uh, <laughs> kick back in... on the deck and sort of be like, a uh, little bit. This is your first uh, task as one of the members of our adventuring party. You must take anything you can carry and bring it down to the uh, or into the storeroom where the food goes or its relative location based on the item in question. Right. I know how to load cargo. She's already got uh, like a sack of potatoes over one shoulder. And... You know what, Fel? I don't think we ever made anyone on the ship a quartermaster. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I thought quartermasters were people that sold magic items. What's a quartermaster? They maintain the stock on the ship. That's kind of my mom's Ooh. job. Oh. Oh, right. she's, a, she's a quartermaster? Yeah, Fair I enough. mean, you know, for a ship this size, it's... We, we all kind of share the work between us as needed, but that's, you know... Oh, right. Shit, we're gonna have to have a meeting about who's the captain of the ship soon. Oh, damn. Oh, I, th I thought Talon was the captain. Yeah, but he's also like... And I thought Karen was the first mate. Is that true? But we own the boat. They don't own the boat. Well... That's the captain's job, isn't it? Oh, I'm not there. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it, I mean, uh, like... We can own a boat and not be the captain, you know? I don't know. I feel like Aubergine would make a good captain. She just got this presence. <laughs> the look of panic. <laughs> She's just got this presence of, like, straight up, like, she could be a terrifying pirate if she put her mind to it. Anyway. Well, so she's got it. the drunk part down. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, something about a drunk and disorderly ship captain just seems right for her. You know? Lyra just, like, shakes her head and goes down into the hold with her sack of potatoes. Anyways, I think we should bring it to a vote later. Do you agree? Well, I maybe. All we'll right, see. Well, you know, if you have any nominations, great. But I'm nominating, uh, I'm nominating uh, Aubergine to be captain of the bigger bit. She didn't get to name the ship, so I figured, you know, uh, you know, since she would, she she would really enjoy, you know, at least being like a hard ass captain. But what if uh, she tries to pull rank and rename the ship? I mean, again? What, what can we do? She's captain. <laughs> Out of character, two things. I'm okay with that, and we can change her name to Captain Fuck 'em Up. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Fuck 'em Up. Nice. Yeah, uh, anyway, Ashara helps Lyra put stuff away. Um, uh, a few minutes later, uh, 
you know, have, after all the shouting and the, the commotion, Talon and Karen emerge from the family's cabin, uh, looking a bit rumpled. Talon's you know, tucking in a shirt. Karen's cheeks are a little flushed. They're like, sorry, so sorry, uh, Talon says. You're back. Bed head, I see. Mm. <laughs> he, he, like, quickly... Uh, Did you finish? Shall... Uh, he just kind of looks around. He's he blushing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> Karen just goes. She starts loading stuff. She's helping out. He's just uh, sh should I make ready to sail? Uh we gotta load up some stuff first. But um, uh, if it's gonna take you a while, um, yeah, I guess get ready now. I mean, like, right. You're on your own. It fell kicks back onto the ground, and he says, "We've got, the we've got time, found. so you know, if you two wanted to go back down below, you uh, know, uh, we're good. Thank you." And all right, just <laughs> checking. What about for secondsies? Uh, no, it's fine. All right. To presume they didn't already have sex twice. Fell. Fell's gonna sit down, and he's gonna start looking through these books. Um, I've got like five blue leather bound books. Yeah. Fell's gonna take a look at these and figure out what they're about. Okay. Um, before we, you know, find a place to potentially sell them, maybe we should find out if there's something that we want to. Well, I think you through. you already looked them over a bit, and you know that they are like sort of dark magics. Okay, but are there any magic spells in them? For for like D and D purposes, no, you can't learn any spells from these. Oh, okay. They're not right, so scroll it's of just whatever. A bunch of... It's just a bunch of... Uh, like ritual stuff and like, you know, instruction kind of things. It's all in... A, you don't understand the language, but you're you're judging by the, the pictures and stuff. All right. Well, very well, very well, very well. Um, cool. Fel's just going to keep going through each of them looking for anything that he can discern, including the gold book, to just find out something about these fuckers. That, uh, I mean, I guess know. about this time, Adadash walks back up, whatever. Yeah, plank bag slung over her. I <laughs> thought I was gonna have help for the second round. What <laughs> happened? Uh, I assume over uh, would have been better. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the, the muscle ones. ones. So they, they probably took the, the robot back down once it was liberated from its initial load and. You're now returning with the second one. You can say that Minstrel's it's... more of a supervisor. He doesn't <laughs> really do the hands-on. <laughs> um, we'd say that this whole process of of loading and then packing things away takes about thirty minutes or so, um, with everyone on deck helping out, except apparently Fell and maybe Minstrel um, putting stuff away. Uh, <laughs> they make pretty decently quick work of it. Fel's Minstrel got six will help put stuff out away. around him, and he looks so smart. Minstrel's helping Lyra put stuff away. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, the stuff that doesn't fit in the, the storeroom, uh, you, you just find space for down in the hold. Um, extra potatoes and jerky and whatever. Um. Oh, Lyra, put a, put an entire sack of jerky into my room, please. What? I like to snack while I am in bed. All right. Goes back, gets it, and transfers it over. Um, Don't worry, I will make it last. And if you ever want some, Lyra, you're welcome to come take a nip. I'm good, thanks. We've got our own doors. Yeah, no, but it's the seek stash of jerky. Okay. <laughs> she just goes back to work. Fell, as she walks away, he's like, I feel like yesterday I gave her like 1200 gold worth of shit and like now she couldn't even give a shit about my existence. It was like two days, yeah, two days ago. <laughs> Kids are horrible. Oh, so you mean you buy presents for little girls with the ulterior motive of having them like you? Is that what you're saying? He said that to himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, at some point... But yeah, but yeah, no, it was more like, a, you know, like trying to be friendly and she just like rolled her eyes at me like I'm some chump <laughs> she seemed so friendly like two days ago uh yeah she gets back to work um 
At some point, uh, Ashara comes up from, from the hold and Talon and Karen kind of catch sight of her and they're like, Oh, uh, Karen walks over and offers her hand. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Karen Gendry. Welcome aboard. And Shara shakes her hand and introduces herself, Ashara Alini. And uh, Karen kind of, those of you that are up on deck, she kind of takes a step back and blinks. It's like, Alini, out of water deep? Ashara kind of, her, her expression sort of tightens up a bit. Once upon a time. And Karen just nods and says, nice to have you. She gets back to work and Ashara just kind of stands there in the middle of the deck. Minstrel just kind of mumbles, I feel like there's a story there. <laughs> Might pry later. <laughs> Gagner, you're <laughs> muted. I said, I, said, I said, part two of this adventure, Once Upon a Time in Waterdeep. <laughs> oh, that could be fun. It'll be a new campaign <laughs> featuring Ashara. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you guys have the ship. Um, you're all boarded and packed up. Packed. All right. Well, let's head back to uh, Salt Marsh. They, uh, Talon gets the sails down. Uh, Karen and Lyra scramble. And Ashara makes herself useful, too. She clearly knows her way around a ship. But when she sees them, you know, go to, like, lower the sails, she comes over and make sure the, the rigging's handled and all that stuff. Um, Minstrel definitely doesn't do any of that. <laughs> the anchor is raised. Uh, you guys have some wind with you this time going back uh, towards shore, so um, you shove off and the island quickly vanishes behind you. You have a couple of days at sea. I think it's three full days, two nights. Maybe what we did last time. Training! Yep. <laughs> and also, Phil does leave a note on the mast of the ship with a little dagger sticking in it that says mandatory scratched out. Uh, uh, guys, if you would please come to a meeting uh, tonight at when the sun goes down. At, it was just like at, and you could tell like it took him a long time. Like you could just tell with the writing that it's like the ink was like dry for a long time, and then there's like new ink that says when the sun goes down for uh, uh, for a mandatory meeting on choosing the captain of this vessel. Oh, another bloody ship meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah, groans right out of my mouth. <laughs> and Adadesh goes back to just eating her apple. Lyra, uh, yeah. Meanwhile, that entire day, Fel spends the entire day uh, that he doesn't spend helping with whatever training he can, which is none. Um, he spends uh, just making a really awesome charcuterie board, um, uh, setting up the table, uh, putting some candles out, um, hanging some drapes. Uh, pretty much he does everything he can an event of to make it look as pretty as possible and I'll roll whatever you would like me to do to make that the nicest event he has put on so far. Look, if you if you spend all day working on it, it is indeed the nicest event you have put together so far. Okay. <laughs> well, how does it compare to the events that other people have put together? Uh, well, uh, how many of those have you been to? You don't know. Can I roll? I haven't put any events together. Can I roll to see how many events I've been to in my 50 years of life? Sure. What should I roll? History. Sure. <laughs> 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 Gotta put, make use of that somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make use of history. <laughs> yep. Uh, history. That's a plus zero, so 14. Yeah, I mean, you've been to some, some decent events, and, you know, for something held aboard a ship with limited supplies and limited resources, you feel like you did a pretty damn good job. All right. All right. 
There's even candles and streamers. I was gonna like maybe you hung up some some cloaks to look like you know little banners or something. Yeah, I sh I shredded. Curtains. Yeah, I totally shredded the disease cloak. I'm just kidding. Uh, that would be horrible. Yeah. And just like raining fucking pestilence on everybody. No. Uh, yeah, I, I just do what I can with what I've got. Okay. Is there anything anybody else would like to do during the day before the meeting? Uh, just training with uh, Lyra and yep. Talon. I think yep. Karen was training with someone else now. Karen was training with me, I think. Yeah, um, and Aubergine, if she'd yeah. like to help out. Uh, Absolutely. Exercise those strong muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I might see if Ashara wants to assist. Um. Yeah, Ashara has been. She's been fairly quiet and kind of distant, just kind of like looking for tasks to do to stay busy around the ship. So I know she knows some shit. <laughs> yeah, she'll she'll come over and um, kind of just help with like forms and you know movement. Not much for the whole weapons thing, but you don't always have a weapon, so you know, got to know how to fight. Um, I think with Talon there, um, while you guys are practicing, he uh, uh, he kind of broaches the subject with with Ashara. Like, I just have to say, it's it's an honor to have you aboard. Your your family's wares are some of the finest I've ever seen. We used to make really good money. I mean, just it, it's anyway. I was, sorry, it's just, and he seems a little flustered and like kind of excited and like trying to keep it like contained. He's a fanboy, isn't he? <laughs> and Ashara is just very, like, a little stone-faced about all of this. She's just like, yep, thank, thank you. Good. And, you know, um, now, now watch your, your foot's all at a weird angle there. No, that's, you're, you're going to be off balance. Fix that. Um, oh, yeah, you guys do some training, uh, some practice. Spells decorating. Fellas, meanwhile, at this exact moment, he is organizing the cheese based on their uh, their dryness and their 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 mold content um, to create like a sort of order to the flavors. It goes cheese and then meats and then fruits and then cheese. It's a cheese and flight. And yeah. And fruit. <laughs> so that as you move your way around the table, you you just sort of crescendo from mild to sharp to yeah. Okay. I know Minstrel at some point is going to try and get Ashara alone for a little conversation. I mean, that's easy enough. Uh, you could have, you know, okay, now practice here and keep working on that and then her side if you wanted. Sure. Okay. Okay. So he'll just approach her and be like, so what, uh, what's all this about water deep? Got some history there. I'm from. Okay. I am also from Waterdeep. Oh. Well. Mind you, I kind of grew up in the streets, so I'm not, you know, well known or anything, but. Right. Uh, my father had a uh, textiles we made. Fine clothes for all the nobles and well to do. Okay. Uh, I think your companion's here. Maybe just forgot himself a little bit, but uh, there's no way he was legitimately selling those wares. Well, not. I don't mind think you. I ever robbed your family, but <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, look, I'm I'm not one to judge, and I'm certainly in no position to to tattle or anything. I was sent away a long time ago for same thing. Were you were you, you weren't sent to the island, were you? No. After my father disowned me, I wandered around a while. Hitched a ride with some of our contacts. Since. Uh, fell in love had a family and shipwrecked were you with your family when you got shipwrecked or no 
No. I'm sorry about that. Now I understand the next snapping. She just nods. This time I thought it was an accident. The abbot gave me a home, a new comfort, shelter. <sighs> well, again. just so you know, I made sure he was definitely dead before we left. No coming back for that one. Good. So, uh, I need do you to have know. any plans oh, on possibly heading back to Waterdeep, or are you pretty much done with the old man? Uh, I don't know. Not, not yet. You seem pretty capable, so you could definitely, you know, strike out on your own, start anew. I might, and Waterdeep's as good a direction as any. Plus, you're also always welcome here. It's very kind of you. We also kind of work for uh, the Coalition. I don't know if you've heard of them. But they could always use people like you. If you were looking for a job. Hmm. I'll have to mull that over. I could set you up with a contact if you wanted. I might take you up on that. So, right now I'm just taking it one day at a time. Get this all of course. see how things go. And with not too bad a pouch of coin with you as well for that. Yeah. Something. Silver lining, I guess. Well, we're not really a greedy bunch. So we like to help where we can. I mean, we kind of get paid for it regardless, I guess. Appreciate that. I was worried when I came down to the dunes that you were all nasty pirates that were going to rob and pillage. I made a huge mistake trying to behalf, but I needed to get off the island somehow, and I'm glad it's in good company. Yes, well. Just then. Oh, oh damn. I mean, it so keeps bad. trying. Just then, <laughs> as that his voice rings out from where she's training Lyra, no, you go for the throat! <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to say we we don't fly any pirate flags, so that's one thing to look for. I, you know the black flag. Yeah, that's I mean, a good sign. Sure, I I didn't see any flag though, so you, you never know. I, I'm no like professional of the sea or anything. I just that's what I hear. If there's black flag, that usually mean pirate, but that could be made up. I don't know. No, it's true. A little closer to shore, if people are trying to be a little more um, discreet, passing through, might fly something different. Ah, yes. Subterfuge. That, that's more my thing. Right. Well, I hear we have a big meeting tonight, so... Ah, uh, yes. Well, I will say there should be a pretty good spread there. <laughs> Last time there was a lot of food. Thanks. So, something to look forward to. We'll see you later. Sounds good. She spends a, she stands at the rail another moment, kind of in, in thought, and then comes back and helps wrap up the training session. Um, and Lyra is... She, she's just like a, a vicious little like, like, okay, go for the throat. I fucking will, man. Let's go. Uh, kinda... Now you're a fuck em up. <laughs> uh, she's and clearly Michelle having fun. Just kind of chimes in. Hey, don't be afraid to go for the eyes. Well, I have the claws, but you don't have that. So, but you can still do it. Uh, he's Poke got a point. Anything soft tissue. 
Eyes. Yes. Okay. Noted. Eyes. They can't eyes, see you. They throat. can't hit you. Right. So she, uh, yeah, she's really into this. She's, she throws herself in. She, you've never had a more devoted, more enthusiastic trainee. Uh, <laughs> I've never had a trainee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the day passes and, uh, she quickly wears herself out, but she keeps pushing through it. Um, and, uh, Talon takes breaks to, you know, make sure you're on course and adjust things for the ship. Um, We're just trying to work up appetites so they just murder that charcuterie board later. Uh, mission accomplished. Uh, <laughs> sunset rolls around. And uh, you all presumably make your way to the allocated meeting spot. Or not. <laughs> yeah. We'll make our way there. I really wanted to change the meeting location or something, yeah. but, <laughs> but Dad would have no reason to do that. So, <laughs> Phil's yeah, just we'll waiting there with all of his nice stuff. It's all set up, and then nobody shows up. And <laughs> yeah, is he, is he wearing his nice? Uh, was it like an overcoat or something that you had? Found? Oh, he wears it all that time. Oh, does. <laughs> all right. Yeah, he wears his nice overcoat with the green iridescent shit that's always on. Cool. 24 7. Um, yeah, so when you guys walk piece. in, you see <laughs> Fel has like lined the table with chairs of different assortments and varieties because I don't think we had matching chairs for a full dining set originally. Uh, we have, you know, nice little lines, flights of cheeses, all that good stuff. We got some wine. Um, and then sitting um, in the middle, of this table is the biggest chair Fel could find wrapped in his bearskin rug. And he made it look as fancy as he could as this fancy, fancy super chair that is unoccupied. Okay. Fel says, welcome everyone. Please have a seat in any chair you would like other than fancy captain chair. Not As he was saying have... that, Minstrel was like in the process of sitting into it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh, not this one? Oh. But it looks so comfortable. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It, it goes to the captain of the ship as the added bonus. That way people will want to be captain of the ship. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm a smart fella. Uh... I want to roll insight on that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I actually, I actually <laughs> muted them myself. What happened? <laughs> so when you said you're a smart fella, I'm like, I want to roll insight on that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Fel, Fel's sitting down waiting for everybody to find their seats. Mm. The, the family takes up a, a corner of the table and they're, they're kind of like, you know, furrowed brows sort of. What's with the, the what's with the sourpuss faces? D they, you know, start, start digging in. Uh, hey, 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 sourpuss oh. faces, why? Oh, just a little confused, but I'm sure the, the meeting carry on. Will I have any questions afterward? I don't know. No, express your concerns now. You got sourpuss faces and you're eating my cheeses. <laughs> I want you to be, I want you to be upright and in front about it. Don't go bleating around the bush, you know? Oh, well, I mean, uh, uh, you mentioned, you know, captain and stuff. I just, it was, at least our commission, uh, your uh, CIA contact, it was my understanding that, uh, I mean, you would all decide where we were going and such, but effectively ship management wasn't really any of your fortes. No, no, captain of the ship is like a, it's an, title for one who is like a big decision maker all right like the big what what's it of all things and there's a ship and we need a captain that's the rules i learned when i read up about books i mean boats in books talon are you saying that you were told you were the captain well because that's what i thought all along honestly i mean yeah yeah for for all intents and purposes i mean any any ship decisions uh any anything affecting the ship or for the safety of the crew uh 
Yeah, yeah, but we still keep telling you where to go and all that. I mean, like, you're not, you're well, not really captaining, you're just kind of chauffeuring. I mean, that's kind of wow. what a captain does when a, when a wow. ship, ship gets yeah. hired. Yeah, you know, well, people are is this your first now? time I'm on just, the ship? I'm just saying, but we own the ship. I'm just saying, you can nominate Talon to be the official captain of the ship that we own. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> You're pretty much just you're just the guy who sits at the helm, whatever the hel helmsman, is that right? Well, I'm, I, more, if you want to be in charge of the ship, you better step up and decide where we go, when we go, how we go, and start being a little bit less of a puss around here. Or they, they look even the more confused now. The the whole family's just like, who is this guy? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, Fel, you got kind of a point here. Uh, Talon, you aren't acting very captainly. Yeah, uh, you're yeah, kind yeah. of just your hat? powering in Fel's face here. <laughs> Where's your hat? <laughs> um, Where's so, your Talon hat? is ship captain, and Fel wants us to have a mission captain. I well, believe. I mean, like, is... they're still, like, we're going to call them captain, so. Let me, let me put this in a perspective for you, Fel. Mm. All of the ships that the army uses mm. each have a captain right none of those captains own those ships bullshit <laughs> the army owns the ships that's the city lie. owns the ships no nope. not the nope. captains no nope. i've seen them say get off my ship to people all the time they run the ship they don't own the ship yeah but they say yeah. my ship uh, that is a possessive oh sure something well, another in grammar here's the thing though if the city decided that ship and that captain were no longer together, they can just take him out and put someone else yeah, in. Yeah, but we own the ship. Not that we would ever do that with uh, Talon and Karen, obviously. Well, no, we're not the city. We own the ship. And we don't own multiple it's, ships. This is we just, just our the, ship. We just own the one ship, which is why I say we get to take a vote in who's captain. I mean, Am I wrong here? Yeah. If, if you're not happy with me, by all means... Um... It's not that we're not happy with you, it's just you're not a very captain-like guy. I mean, you're more of a, you're more of a, a ship maintenance, tele, uh, sails it, keep everything working, uh, keep the I... sails going, <laughs> keep everything functioning properly, maybe keep the ship in good repair. I just, I really um, don't understand what you think captains do if they don't do all that stuff. <laughs> no, no, this is a captain. This is a captain of a ship. He's kind of like, he's like, ah, I'm a captain. And he's got like a big sword and a big hat. And he's got a tank and a veil in his hand at all time. That's a captain. I think Fel's read too many books. <laughs> he's read like three. Or, books. yeah, or not enough. <laughs> reaches across the table to where Aubergine is sitting, grabs a bottle of wine, pours Tal in a glass, pours herself a glass, Pours fell a glass and says, shut up. <laughs> I mean, I set up the spread of, of of meetings, so we're gonna have a meeting. <laughs> oh well, we're currently in this meeting talking yeah, 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 about right. so, things. I just but, propose uh, that we all nominate people we think might be good captains. If you wanna nominate Talon, go ahead. I nominate I Talon. Nominate... Oh great, Lyra. Great, great, fantastic. Well, I'm nominating Aubergine. I second Talon. <laughs> Talon, Karen raises her hand and Char just kind of looks around the table Talon Fuck, you just got here <laughs> Half a vote <laughs> I mean then don't invite everybody to the meeting if you don't want everybody at the meeting I just put it on the thing like you know The note said everyone Yeah it did Well it's a pretty good wine there you should have a drink buddy <laughs> all that's I not, all that's I not the new here. wine, is it? No, not for the good meeting. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Let's well, save Talon, that new wine. Talon, you get to sit in the fancy chair, but you're going to get yourself a hat next time we make port, and you're going to fucking wear it. Right. Can I nominate Aubergine for captain of the... For mission captain, though? What? There's, we have two captains? That's going to get confusing. Mission captain Aubergine. I think that was specific. <laughs> All right, vote for mission captains. Uh, feel free to nominate mission captains. Uh, Do those of us okay. that don't go on missions it's get to vote? <laughs> yeah, of course you get to vote your voters. I vote. Also, one day you're going to be going on missions, so. Okay, I nominate Minstrel. 
Oh All right. shit. Alright. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool, Lyra. You know, whatever. Shoot me in the heart all the time, you big jerk. You know, don't what lock makes me you think I want this responsibility. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be Mr. Captain. I just want Lira to be nicer to me. You know, like. I mean, I he to... he taught me how to poke out eyeballs. I don't know what you want from me. I did do that. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess. Fun. I guess. I guess. <laughs> once again, I know I nominate Aubergine. But, you know, I guess she's going to have to have an even bigger hat. And then we're going to have to get two hats, but different styles. Uh, uh, Fella, are, <laughs> are you feeling all right? Karen asks. I worked, I worked on this spread all day, and I made a fancy chair. I mean, and... I don't know what you all went through down there on now, that island. Now but it's I've been a couple of days, and maybe, maybe there's... Maybe some heat stroke or some dehydration. I have to make a second chair that's just for missions. Or maybe the bear one's the mission chair, and I gotta have a captain's chair that's covered in, like, seashells or something. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> you have a job, Phil. We can find a job for you on this ship. I don't need a job. I need a fucking distraction. And he stands up and he walks out of the room. It's... Okay, now I feel bad. Is everything all right? I mean, obviously not, but like... I actually... Uh, I think he's worried about his uh, pretend totally girlfriend. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Uh, now I feel like a jackass. No, he's not all right, is he? Dad. Well, you know, kids these days have a lot uh, going on. I should probably talk to him. If it's girl troubles, you know, it can be very confusing. <laughs> well, he is a pretty young drow. So, you know, <laughs> could be a teenage angst. <laughs> he's like 50. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's Elves not a... and drow mature after 100, so you're really young. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> he's, a half, but he's a half drow, not a full drow. That's what? What's the other half? Is it the same rule as half elves? <laughs> because half elves are mature at like 18. So 50 for a half elf would be 50. No, it's not quite 50 because they live for like a couple They live of longer, years. but they, they reach maturity at the same rate as humans. No. So it's hard to say. Full drow, then, yeah, is, he's matures at 100 like elves do. <laughs> well, who knows? Fels, uh, he's not a full drow, though. No, he's half. What's the other half? <laughs> Welcome to our fun facts for the day. Yeah. <laughs> half drow, half elf? No. <laughs> half drow, half, half something. Half something. Well, I better go talk to him. Uh, Talon, congratulations on the chair. <laughs> and uh, before I leave, I'm going to scoop up a bunch of cheese and shove it in my mouth. <laughs> Just like whole bricks of cheese. Yeah, and then I'm going to go find Phil. <laughs> okay. All right, good luck. Well, where are you at? What you doing? Uh, who knows? Who knows where Phil's yeah. at? Can I roll a perception check to find Phil? Before or investigation. Or investigation. Well, if you're yeah. actively trying to hide, you can roll stealth if you want. I mean, I'm in a pretty good hiding spot. I guess oh, I'll roll stealth. I think I, I, okay. I, I, think I know where you are. I rolled a uh, 15 plus... Six, I think. Okay, you're in your spot and you're very, very quiet. Uh, you are so um, quiet. <laughs> Wait, I need to find out what my actual stealth is. Your or is he crying? Plus six, so that's a uh, 21. <laughs> I rolled a 10. <laughs> you look around and you don't you don't see him through sight. I mean, he's not on the main deck. He's not on the top decks. And he's not in his room. Okay. Uh, Dad will just uh, leave out some cheese for him. <laughs> As if he's like a rat. <laughs> Set it down. Maybe write a, a little note that says for fell. <laughs> Put it there. And I guess rejoin the party. He puts it on a mouse trap and walks away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> for fell from dead. Exactly. Nice. Smiley and face. Adidash is talking to the others. So I guess the mission captain thing is out. I don't know who to ask this. Did we fail? Do we have nothing to bring back to our employer? 
Oh no, we have news. But we're we still know... not getting paid, are we? Well, not yet. But we know who took his documents. We don't know where they went, though. Plus, uh, I think we need to have a little conversation with him about how he obtained this wealth to see if anything she said rings true. Mm, that's a good point. Kind of sounded like he was, uh, I don't know, into slavery or something sketchy. Not the altruistic, uh, benevolent hero the people of Saltmarsh have made him out to be. Yeah. Something's not kosher, let's put it that way. Could, under could be also why he was, you know, <laughs> trying to ask us in secret to find this stuff. So the others might not know about it. Well, we'll get him to talk one way or the other. I'm sure of that. What do we go for, Lyra? The throats! <laughs> or the Mitchell's, eyes! Or the Mitchell's eyes! kind of uh, leaning up against the wall, like sharpening his claws. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the eyes. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the you go for the throat. Here's, this is a good lesson. You go for the throat when you don't want them to talk. Right. You go through the eyes if you want them to talk. If you don't care if they talk, you go for the throat. Right. You don't want to hear them beg for their lives. You're not there. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. I'm saying it out of character. Okay. Does that sound like fell to you? No, you're, mm. that's fair enough. Sorry. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the family and, and Ashara, they hear you talk about all this stuff, and they kind of just listen and stay quiet, um, taking in this sort of grim turn of events, apparently. Oh, Talon and Karen, you you guys lived in Salt Marsh, yes? Uh, we do, do a lot of business there, yes, as much as we have a home. So are you somewhat familiar with Galen? Yeah, I mean, as, as... Or his reputation, at least. As you said, he's a, a veritable man of the people. Uh, I mean, he he uses his wealth usually to, you know, eats the poor, does, you know, charity events, throws these big parties and stuff for the whole, whole city. Um, everyone loves him. Wonder if he does that to make up for his other endeavors. Could be a guilty conscience, could be a facade. I suppose you make, never... Make wealth off the backs of others and then gives it to those where he lives now to make him look good? I don't know. Something's not right there. Somebody's lying to us. We need to figure out who it is. What will you do if he is lying. Karen asks. Well, we'll tell the rest of the council. It'll be up to them what they do. I don't think he'll be on the council anymore, that's for sure. Strange times. But, I mean, it's not my decision to make. I just get the information. I'm not, I'm not going to kill him if that's what you're asking. I mean, you know, unless he came at me with a weapon, but yeah, that, that would be stupid on his part. Well, the coalition said we'd be in for a interesting change of pace. Yep, it's never quiet with the coalition. I kind of look over at Lyra and like a wicked grin. The fuck up ups. You know, Lyra, I'm gonna have to train you on stealth missions. Yeah. I think that might be the next little endeavor once we get back to town. Right, like you'll like give me a mission to like 
steal something from a neighboring boat without getting caught or something like that? Oh, not at first. First I show you how to be stealthy. Yeah, of course. Cool. Right. But eventually, you know, I might uh, give you little missions here and there. Awesome. And, uh, Karen just kind of shakes her head, rolls her eyes a bit. <laughs> Make a master thief out of you yet. I mean, uh, perfectly good sheep person. <laughs> yes. Uh... Um, hey, survival skills, that's, that's important, right? Well, coming from one who lived on the streets of Waterdeep, survival skills are very important. Ugh. I'm just gonna chime in here real quick. Uh, I've been listening to what you've been saying and, and listening to the training, and forgive me, forgive my language, but y'all motherfuckers need religion. <laughs> 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 Perhaps I can give Clara some private tutelage in the ways of the Lord. Religion never helped me growing up on the streets of Waterdeep. I don't see how it could help here and now. I mean, have you not been watching me? I'm pretty cool. <laughs> Ashara kind of, I mean... You never know where it's going to be helpful, is the whole point, I think. Yeah, I've been a little too busy, you know, in the front line, taking care of business. I haven't noticed you in the back there, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be, uh, a worse rogue than I thought. I'm pretty big, I'm hard to miss, and you just... <laughs> Totally didn't see anything, huh? Well, you're easy to shoot around, I can tell you that much. You know what? I guess I didn't try hard enough to find Fell. I, uh, I guess I better do that. <laughs> and Dad uh, just walks away. <laughs> Minstrel's just like, uh, religious people. Jeez. That was so fucking brutal. <laughs> always always trying fired. to force people into their beliefs. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but you know who had religion? The abbot. Yeah, it didn't do him no good. He murdered a whole lot of people. Well, it's like any other weapon, I suppose. In the wrong hands. Well, this was just about the worst meeting in history. <laughs> it's a good I place I setting, though. <laughs> Delicious food. The really the best. Amazing. Incredible. Yeah, definitely. Pretty good spread. Ashara is just like she's picking like one of everything, just like one ham. That's yeah, too bad Fell isn't here to see this, but this uh spread of his is probably going to be gone pretty soon. <laughs> Last time I think it barely got touched. Well, Progress. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've all worked up an yeah. appetite. <laughs> heavily now. <laughs> kind of feels like an asshole. <laughs> so is there anything else you guys would all like to do this evening before bed? Uh, Dad, are you? How hard are you looking for Fell? Uh, not at all. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no no way that I think he's actually looking for me. Yeah. <laughs> I am absolutely going to put a bucket of water on top of Vinstrel's uh, door, <laughs> door jam. So when he opens it up. Okay. Hoping um, I won't notice it. Huh? Because okay. he is not skilled at disarming traps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vinstrel, do you make a habit of checking traps on his own bedroom door? Yeah, I mean, is that a habit of yours, or do you just walk I right mean, in? My passive investigation is 20, so... Oh, yeah, you definitely notice something's amiss. <laughs> I see things. I definitely see things. <laughs> passive investigation of 20. <laughs> Nothing gets by you. Nope. <laughs> Literally, that's what the stats say. Nothing gets by him. <laughs> I'll definitely know who it was. <laughs> and I may or may not booby trap something of his in the future. 
<laughs> oh no. Who can play this game? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know what my passive perception is. It's not like, I think, 13. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, I think I'm good then. <laughs> well, that should that should be fun. <laughs> All right, cool. I like this game. Pranks are fun. Do <laughs> so you all um, get off to bed at some point or hang out? Yeah. Well, Fell in the area in which he is in will go ahead and take off his uh, coat, his armor, his pants. Is everything, and he will just sit cross legged, completely naked, and just sort of meditate. Okay. Sounds very uncomfortable on a wooden I ship. In the pantry. <laughs> I guess uh, Adidash and Datarak don't know about the secret compartments. Uh, that's probably true. They they were not there for that, no. Yeah, unless unless you guys have informed them at some point. Not about my secret compartment. <laughs> I don't think we did. So, uh, no, we have no idea. Yeah, that's that's Fell's room and Aubergine's room, I believe. You have a new person aboard now, and uh, as everyone starts kind of winding down for the night, um, uh, Karen uh, offers to Ashara. You know, there's we have extra. Amex, we can throw one up in the hold or uh, wherever you so they set her up down there with go. Yeah. Yep. And then we got like two more days of travel. Yeah. <laughs> Fel doesn't really go to sleep. Fel just continues to meditate and right. is um, focusing on uh, listening, really. Okay. Um, well, I've been kind of thinking, why not? I never get to use this. I don't think I can play the bagpipes. Oh, God, don't oh. do it. Oh, Fun. So oh, that's what Adidas is doing. Bedtime. Today. Oh, God. <laughs> so he's playing the bagpipes and Fel's trying to meditate in every <laughs> third super high pitched. I mean, are... his eyebrow just. Uh, <laughs> if you want to make a performance check for how good the and like, are you, I guess how well you go for the the mood you're going for? Are you trying to play something like jaunty and inspiring, or something like soothing and yeah, something kind of uh, wistful? Okay. So what you're saying is she needs to roll to see how not horrible. The music she creates is. I mean, they are bagpipes. They're pretty. They're, uh... they're bagpipes. There's no... <laughs> like, they're loud. It's not bad a... Scotland on the moors. It's... Yeah, that's what I'm going it's not, for. It's I've not heard some how good bagpipe it music. It's how it's not possible. bad can you manage to make it? I get to add proficiency, right? If I'm proficient with bagpipes. Yes. Mm. Um, that is a twenty-one. It's, it's haunting, but it, it's beautiful. It's. Yeah, it's got this. You no. Know, you feel swept away. Somewhere kind of mystical and strange. How long do you play this for? <laughs> oh, maybe half an hour. Ooh, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so bad. Yeah. Also, it sounds like it's probably, I mean, 21 is pretty good music, man. Even for a bagpipe. Like, she took it from not horrible to actually pretty good. She's very skilled. Once you're above a 20, even a bagpipe can sound okay. But 30 minutes long? <laughs> Most songs are, you know, a couple minutes. <laughs> It's, it's like not one, one song. Cinema scores just you know, keeps going, kind of just and going and going and going. No, it's a, it's 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 a it's an album where there it could, it plays continuously, but it shifts from one song to the next. <laughs> Look, so, it's my or, form of meditation. All right. Or it's the same song over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bagpipe song that never ends. <laughs> oh God. Haunting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think, you know, you, you're playing this up on deck, I assume. Um, yeah, probably, have... like, bow of the ship, you know, surrounded by the sea, air, the breeze and the stars and just feeling kind of mm, contemplative. All right, now I'm yeah. picturing Celine Dion. Uh, well, good, that's what I've been picturing the whole time. A little yeah. Titanic going on. Yeah, exactly. A little Titanic. Yeah, you've got Karen up in the crow's nest while Lyra um, takes her sleep. Uh, Alan's fiddling up, up by the helm. Uh, Ashara sits at the bow, kind of. Nobody makes any complaints. All right, or anything. well, they all seem to be. That was depressing as fuck. I guess I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, so you all find yourselves uh, your your ways to your rooms and and. Bed and um how does dad normally sleep like standing up <laughs> hanging upside down like a bat. <laughs> or like do you have a hard time sleeping or you know out like a light uh oof. currently you've got a lot of big chairs in your bedroom Is your bedroom the No, my well galley? I don't have I don't have one bedroom. Yeah, I the galley of... is where he's waiting. Your bedroom is where the meeting was. was. It was the meeting room. <laughs> um I think dad usually goes out pretty quickly. Sleeps pretty well. Yeah. Snores like a snores. Model T. <laughs> uh all right. Um yeah, you you lie in your makeshift bed. The uh the ship rocking bed. The sound of the waves lapping at the hull. Sensations you kind of begun to grow accustomed to in your life here on the coast. Dad, you hear distant thunder. Uh, not unusual. Far enough off that it's it's really none of your concern. Just part of the atmosphere, the rolling waves. And do have a hard time falling asleep tonight. Maybe it's. It was a heck of a day, heck of a couple of days. Took a lot out of all of you. You feel like you're exhausted, you're tired, but you're restless. Something's itching at you. And when you do finally fall asleep into the darkness of slumber, you feel yourself continuing to fall, falling. There's a lurch in your chest as you try to flail for purchase. You're flying through the air, and you know how this ends. What do you do? Oh boy, um, I'm in surrounded by darkness. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, you you can't see anything, but you you can feel yourself. There's that that lurch, in your gut. You feel yourself plummeting. Uh. I'll brace myself, first of all, for a coming impact, and uh, I will, I'll, I will pray to my God, the Lord of Gray Skies and Electric Light, um, just out of instinct, and ask for storm force winds to soften my fall. You utter this prayer into the void around you. And you can feel it whipping up around you, this cold, bracing wind. And your fall feels slower, softer. That pressure and panic in your chest eases and you feel yourself more more drifting than falling. Above you, the darkness crackles, a flash of lightning. And in the cold whipping about you, you feel flakes touching your face, snow, tender, alighting on your cheeks. They melt and fall like teardrops as you're drifting. The lightning crackles through the void, and in the brief flash, you see the outline of an enormous humanoid figure reaching down towards you. A voice crashes like thunder in your mind. 
and you can't help but think of the dead. All that was taken will be taken back. When the lightning crackles again, you see a forest glade below you. Beautiful green life surrounding a small clearing, the center of which stands a familiar tiny shape. Aubergine. Aubergine, you find yourself in your sleep, surrounded by nature. Grasses, shrubs, trees, flowers, a bounty that you call home. And you hear this voice overhead through the dark sky. All that was taken will be taken back. And as the lightning arcs down to strike one of the trees, a blaze erupts, spreading rapidly, consuming, hungry, this beauty around you withering and crumbling to ash. What do you do? Uh, I, I think I would fall to my knees, tears in my eyes, and just kind of in shock, just no. No, not again. Yeah, you crouch there, uh, kneel there, um, trying to, to, to block it all out. And you're trapped in this heat and this smoke. You start coughing. You can feel it encroaching in on you, pressing down on you, smothering you. And the lightning flashes again. You open your eyes, the flames are gone. All around you is ashes, just this gray rolling field. And you can see new life in them, seeds split open by the heat, sprouting, pushing through the gray dust of the life that was there before. And as you kind of turn and take all of this in, you see Dadarak drifting down to stand on the other side of this thin, thin veil of smoke that separates you. Two of you stand looking at each other across this. C can I move or talk or anything? Yeah. All you see is this, this ashen field in every direction. The, the sky is just black. The horizon's black. Um, Dadarak will stare at Aubergine and look around and look back to her and say, I'm sorry. Aubergine kind of, her eyes are kind of glazed over and she's doesn't really look all there. She's kind of lost in memories. And like his words don't really make sense, but she just kind of nods and looks around at everything. These plants that had begun to sprout from these first seeds, they're kind of inching their way toward the beginnings, the early stages of a new forest. You both stand there in your brief The ground shifts, brush begins to rise up. A mound rises between the two of you and erupts as a small humanoid figure pushes its way up from beneath, getting to its feet in a wheezing, gray, coughing cloud, just sending dust everywhere. And she brushes herself off and looks around, sees the two of you he stands in the middle. What the fuck is this? Ashara says. Uh, um. I, I I don't know. What? How are you here? She's just coughing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm, I was burning and 
and <laughs> fucking chat. Um, <laughs> uh, just darkness and and she she's looking around wildly, trying to place herself and make sense of this. And there's another flash of lightning. You all look up to the sky and see this enormous humanoid. Just It's a silhouette. You can't see any features. But the hands are kind of outspread, hovering over the three of you standing in this burned out but regrowing hearing. And the voice says, Life, death. There is a balance to be maintained. And you see darkness fall, drift back into a normal sleep. Huh. Morning comes, eventually. Sun rises on the ocean. It was an uneventful night. Nobody spotted any pirates or anything closing in. Clear is up on watch as sun rises. Karen has breakfast set out um, in the hold on another table. And Dad's sleeping in the uh, previous room. And you can smell, you know, sausage and potatoes. Those of you that wake up with the sun. What do you all do? I'm going to go get some chow and then just sit on the deck, chilling. And, you know, do more training and shit today, probably. <laughs> Yeah, uh, also, contemplate what my prank on dad is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, conniving little cat <laughs> mischief. Um, Karen uh, is asleep. Alan is poking around up on the main deck again. Uh, oh no, wait, I said Karen. Other way around. Karen made breakfast. Talon's asleep. Um, and Ashara's sitting out at the bow again, looking out over the waves. Already munching on something. I think uh, Aubergine would awake with a start, covered in sweat, bags under her eyes, just generally not in great shape, and kind of follow the smell of food, but then when she gets there, kind of, I don't know, it's, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> so she goes and just kind of sits at the table looking at everything. Dad's similar. Um, wakes up, definitely confused, somber. We'll go get, fetch a cup of coffee or tea or whatever warm drink is available and find a quiet place on deck to sit and drink it. There's coffee. Um, you guys have you know, the essentials in your supplies from before you left Salt Marsh. Um, what about Adidash? I believe she's an early riser. Yeah, I'm um, thinking Adidash is training by herself this morning. Just a, you know, training dummy in her glaive. Warm-ups? Yeah. Everybody else is being very solemn. And I think maybe Adidash still feels that a little bit, but it would be too much if she was joining in the gloom. So instead, she's got to <laughs> work out some frustration. Fair enough. Bell, what are you up to? Naked. Cross legs. <laughs> sitting... Just gonna my meditate table. for three days. <laughs> and just listening and waiting to see if I hear anything. I mean, you can hear the sounds of the ships, uh, as, as, especially as people start to wake up. Um, uh, that's not what I'm listening to. All right. <laughs> I 
Well, the the morning passes. Uh, you have your breakfast. Um, there are ship's duties that need to be seen too, but in moments of free time, you can certainly grab your trainees and uh, do some instruction. Talon seems exhausted. Just his muscles are just their noodles. He's been working them so hard, so much more hard the last couple of days. And uh, uh, I bet he has. <laughs> uh, he just hasn't built that uh, that muscle strength yet for for um, intensive bouts of sparring. Mm -hmm. Sparring, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Lyra's right back at it, ready to go as soon as she uh, she gets up. Is there anything in particular you would all like to do today? I mean, at some point today, Adidas just tosses Dadarak an apple. And says, hey, I'm sorry about yesterday. It was kind of a dick. Oh, uh, I'd completely forgotten about that. It's, you know, there are bigger troubles in the world. You know, there's always another storm on the horizon. Cheers. I will, I will I raise the apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Minstrel will probably join Ashara off the side there at some point and just okay. not say anything, just stare out there next to her. She is a good companionable silence. Yep. <laughs> Maybe she'll like reach over and hand you some cheese or something. <laughs> Trade some sausage for some cheese. Excellent. <laughs> Not a word, just... Right. It's silent understanding. <laughs> <laughs> As a note, Dad is deliberately avoiding Aubergine and Ashara. Doesn't want to be in their line of sight. Okay. Um, do you try to be stealthy about it, or is it fairly obvious to anybody paying attention that, like... <laughs> It would look silly if Dad was trying to sneak around. No, it's just if he clocks them, he'll move to a place where yeah. they are, they are not. Yeah, Overgen, you might notice this unless you are also trying to avoid Dad. Um, you might notice that you know he tends to leave when you appear. Kind of up to you. I was I was gonna say that Aubergine is probably gonna like, I guess not sneakily, but kind of try and catch his eye at some point but he's just you know <laughs> literally not looking at her so. yeah i mean you might catch dad's eye but he'll immediately be evasive about like look away there is probably a spark of acknowledgement in that but do the rest of us notice this i think with your passive perception it's fairly obvious that there is some awkwardness happening. Have we seen Fel yet at all? No. <laughs> okay, I walk up to Minstrel. They killed Fel! He's having, nice, having a nice quiet moment with Ashara, but uh, yeah, I, I clop up. Hey, have you noticed the others are acting really strange today? Oh, I haven't, no. I've just sort of been hanging out here. Looking out at the, the ocean, or sea, or whatever this is. <laughs> the water. <laughs> Sorry, doesn't no. say anything. Well, I what? haven't seen Fell yet. Might have heard his feelings yesterday about the uh, the meeting. And Dad and, and uh, Aubergine, well, they look like a couple of people who don't want to admit what they did last night. <laughs> oh. Did something happen there? It's weird. That's a interesting mix. I mean, he's so big and she's so little, but Thank okay. Because I wish Fel was there to say the exact same thing. <laughs> like that whole time, I was like, man, if Fel wasn't being a baby, oh. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, I think it's gonna be a long trip back. 
Oh, well, this should be fun. What about you two? Are you two okay? I'm great. Bashara? He just nods. At a dash, claps Bashara on the shoulder. Says, good. Let's keep it that way. It's already a little too weird for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Could get weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you ain't seen nothing you, yet. <laughs> yeah, she um, just kind of casts like a side eye over at the two of you. I don't know what. Was I try to find out? She gets up, and uh, she goes looking for aubergine and or datarak. Adidas just looks confused. Like, why is that your job? <laughs> uh, There's a weird environment on this ship right now. <laughs> Mr. will look at Adidas and just say, train. So you, you haven't seen Fail for a while? Not since, uh, not since he left the room last night. All right, I'll go find him. And um, I'll head straight to his little cubby hole because I know all about it. <laughs> Alright, you're gonna open a door and you're gonna Left get all freaked alone. the fuck out. Hey, How I've seen worse. Well? <laughs> I don't think Aaron, you have. <laughs> Alright, so while that's happening on the main deck, Minstrel, you walk into Fel's room. You see the, the plate of cheese that Dad left there last night with a little note. <laughs> um, I'll take one. <laughs> Ooh, jeez. Nice. <laughs> and uh, you, you find that, that little hidden door at the back. I mean, probably the one that it's, found it in the first place. It's totes McLocked, but you know. <laughs> that won't stop me. Yeah, if you want to open it, make a roll. I'm going to pop that puppet open. Uh, where's my... There it is. Or not. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> How? Bell, you hear somebody kind of jiggling with the lock. Um, there's some tinkering. Guess my meditation is not as deep as I would like. I feel like I should go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Um, that one has the a odds stumped. of rolling double natural ones. Yeah, it's oh. got to be insane. Yeah, yeah. Something, some force unbeknownst to all of us, did not want you to go into that room. They were well, trying I'll... to spare you. I'll knock on it then and be like, um, hey, Fel, you want to open this thing? I'm not uh, with it this morning. <laughs> you hear Fel let out a deep audible sigh from the other side. Um, uh, yeah, give me a bit. And I will put my clothes back on. I'll be and... sitting in your room snacking on cheese waiting for you. <laughs> And I will slide the door open a little bit, and you can see that Fell's hair is, like, not put together, and his eyes are really droopy, and he looks really tired and exhausted. I expect a dirty, sweaty mess coming out of that tiny room you've been in for, like, eight-plus yeah, hours. with no ventilation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he looks like shit. It's pretty bad. A little sauna in there. <laughs> I mean, he was naked. That don't matter. You're gonna be making even more heat. So he's like, what is it you want, menstrual? Well, no one's seen you for a while. Want to see what's up? Nothing much, man. You're usually so sociable. You've been hiding out in here. I'm not really in the mood. Do you want to talk about it? No. I know why you're not in the mood. Oh, that's good. Sure you don't want to talk about it? I don't see the point in talking about it. We'll figure out what we figure out, and until then, there's not much to it, is there? So you're just going to sulk in your room until we get back to town? Well, you know, it's either that, or I get very angry at somebody for no reason, and then I snap at them, and, uh, and that's not exactly what I want. So, luckily, Perfect. things have been all quiet, um, but I do get to be into a temper and lose myself a bit when I'm in this sort of state. 
was trying to make fun of it, but I think uh, nobody else was in much of a mood either. So I'm just going to stay in my hovel, and I'm going to um, maybe come back up. And, uh, and he, oh, he he does reach out and grab the jerky and starts dragging it in. <laughs> Never mind. I'm actually good. I'll see you when we make port. Do you want me to bring you anything else? A beverage, perhaps? <laughs> it's a lot of jerky. Yeah, bring me some... Um, uh, what? Bring me something Aubergine doesn't like drinking. Um, you know, some... Some something... water, then. <laughs> <laughs> Something, something, something hard, you know, but maybe not something that, you know. Ask Aubergine what her favorite is, and then bring me something that's not that. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, you know, I think she's been going pretty hard on the wine lately. Right. Yeah. Maybe I'll well, bring you some ale. That's that's great. Um, also, thank you for not just barging in. You know, I know you could have picked that lock easily on your own, and <laughs> um, just thank you oh, for being considerate. Totally. I, just, I I jiggled it a bit just to give you the heads up. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you giving me my space. <laughs> totally. Um. So, uh, thank you, thank you, and um. I'll bring you back a keg and a cup. Yeah, since and you maybe want to be here for a couple days. You know, maybe like a wash pan would be good too. If oh yes, one of those laying around. Well, you have one in your room here. Right? You can just take that. Yeah. It's really far away. <laughs> Mistral slides it towards the door. <laughs> and he just like grabs it and sort of drags it back. And he says, okay, make sure you knock again next time too, because you don't really want to see what's going on in here. <laughs> I think I'll leave the keg at the door, knock, and then leave. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be back and that will be the sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And still, um, your, your, your friendship and your consideration are much appreciated. Um, All right. <clears throat> yep. Good talk. Well, man. enjoy your alone time. Uh, yeah. No, no. It's, uh, it's, it's usually how I, I roll. We've had so many people around. This is not my usual scene. I mean, um, if you need anything, I'd say you could just let me know, but. You would have to leave the room to do that, so... Yeah, no, I mean, if I really... This is your one and only chance to get I some mean, stuff. if I really need something, I'll just come out. I mean, it's not that big a fucking deal. I just figure, you know, it's... Rather than risk yelling or snapping at somebody, and, or, or worse yet, attacking them, but it, it's just... All right, all right. I get it. Yeah. Um. So, you know, um, enjoy the voyage. Uh, uh, I think... I think we bought some fishing rods if you want to do some of that, you know. Oh, I have planes already. Oh, I have oh. a prank to pull on dead. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Let me know how that goes. Um, Should be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to go easy on him, though, because, you know, he's real weak and shit. Um, well, you know, he tried to do the whole bucket of water above the door thing. And... Yeah, 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 but, you know, he's got, like, this whole, like... He wants to take care of everybody, but oh, know, don't worry, I'll go easy on you. You know, if you if you if you if you hurt his his pride, you know, with 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 a bad joke, you know, he might just close up and 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 you know, I really do like um, his his backpacks. They really um, <laughs> they really brighten my day. You know what I mean? So no worries, it'll be it'll be playful. Uh, uh, all right, well, um, good good on you. Bye. See you. <laughs> Bye. And then I'll go and get like a keg of ale and a mug and then bring it back to his room. See, I just see Monstrel just like Minstrel just come out from Fell's thing, go straight over to the thing, and yep. go walk back with a keg of ale and then walk back out again. Mm -hmm. And then once I finally come back out of his room, I'll just be like, Fell would like to be alone for the journey. <laughs> so. Do not disturb, I guess. I don't... What do you... Hang a sock on the door. A sock on the door, I guess. <laughs> Just the disease cloak wrapped around the door handle. Yeah, do not disturb. That thing, yeah. do not. <laughs> yeah. All right. So with that, we're going to take our five-minute break.
Uh, good stuff, guys. Fel, Fel, Fel is currently like meditating and he's got the disease cloak wrapped around himself. No one shall see. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Uh, see y'all in five. And we're back. So after Minstrel leaves Fel to his strange and mysterious devices, um, yeah. we had Ashara going off to try to find Aubergine and or Dadarak. So, Dad, I, are you avoiding her as well? I am. <laughs> uh, Aubergine, well, Aubergine what about to. you? <laughs> yeah. uh, Aubergine is just openly drinking. Just She was trying to find Dadarak, but saw that he wasn't interested, so she's just kind of... Hanging around the, uh, yeah. the table area. Um, well, Ashara, um, comes down from the main deck and, and, and sees you standing there and, uh, good morning. Morning. So, uh, that, that all really happened, right? Yeah, I think so. Does it? Does it make any sense to you? Yeah, it was my fault. What? The... Maybe she kind of gets this like lost look in her eyes and she's kind of stays silent for a minute. And she says, the fire. Oh. I don't... I mean, I, I, I don't know what to think. I've never... I've never had any kind of visions or anything. I mean, I spent the last five years in an abbey full of religious people of all sorts, and I never... That has to be what it was, right? For us all to... For you and I, anyway. I think so. And that, that voice... That... Thing up in the sky, do you... Did that mean anything? No. But when I set the fire... A lot of beings died. The, the, the balance you pay attained. I feel like, like I owe something. Me too. Well, Dad seems to be n not in the mood to talk about it. No. Caught him out of the corner of my eye up there and turned the other way. So. Yeah, he's he's avoiding us. I wonder. I guess we'll give him his space and time. Uh, if you want to talk, I'm... I don't know much about you or any of you, really, and I guess I've been <sighs> insane. I think it's safe to say we've all been through some shit. We've all done some shit. And us have a clear conscience. But I think we're all here for a reason. Whatever that might be.
I'm sorry I got you dragged into this. However, that happened. Uh, I don't think Minstrel speaks for all of you, but... He invited me to stay if I wanted, or at least made, made me feel welcome here. And I don't want to make assumptions about how the rest of you feel about me. But I do want to think off that island and showing me giving me the opportunity to find out what was really the truth of the lie that I was living. Yeah, that was some crazy stuff. Anyway, point being, whatever I'm in now, it's worth it. <laughs> She'll just grab some more food off the table and give you a nod and I think Aubergine will kind of like wipe a wipe a tear from her eye and then go back to drinking. Put the leftovers in the fridge. I think at that <laughs> moment Adadash comes in for some lunch. Okay. A little sweaty. Oh see you beat me to it. Everyone alright in here? Char kind of nods. She was meets you at the the ramp, thing up and um. Yeah, I think uh, the all the whole family is awake now by midday. Um, some of them are clear us back up in the crow's nest. Uh, Talon's been excused from his uh, training to rest and recover, and uh, they're kind of puttering around. Grab some water and a handful of grapes and kind of try to awkwardly sit. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like I'm trying to sit from the waist up. I'm trying to make myself comfortable, but no changes. From It's a little bit of shifting and maybe like, a yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> You're muted if you... Oh, I was hitting the wrong Oops. button. Uh, and yeah, she's just kind of there. Like... There's a silent... I'm open, man. If you need me, I'm here. But she doesn't say anything, because she doesn't know how to deal with that shit. Yeah, Ashara, by the, by the ramp, uh, before she goes up, she'll kind of turn and just... Everything all right up on deck? Oh, yeah, it's a... Calm day. I got a workout and a half in, to be honest. Well, I suppose we'd all better keep our strength up. Never know what's gonna happen next. Well, uh. Shit, what's his name? Not Karen. Talon. Talon. Talon tells me the weather's on our side today. We sh Maybe. <clears throat> have a nice trip to look forward to. That'd be nice. It's actually been a while since I've seen a good, solid, sunny day. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, you should. Maybe I'll meet you up there later. Go enjoy it. Nods and heads up. Uh, I'd say th it's about this time that Minstrel comes out with for the keg and... Uh... <laughs> Well, as you said, that, that fell wanted to be alone. Do not disturb. Minstrel's literally, like, whistling as he walks in, gets a keg, walks <laughs> out. Doesn't even acknowledge anyone. <laughs> He's not the type to have a day like that. <laughs> He's all chipper about it, though. He's not, like, moping or nothing. So what's dad up to? You you got kind of uh, most of the, I think all the group is down in the hold area or in their rooms now. 
probably fishing. Okay. What a nice Sitting thing. off the back of the boat, trolling, yeah. you know, trolling lure. You know. All right. Just trying to be alone. Probably drinking. Probably <laughs> drinking. Yeah, Shara comes back up and goes over to the bow. Got the front. Pops down. Uh, is there... It, it, it's midday now. Um, lunchtime. Anything anybody wants to do today? Um, since Adadash is with me, I think Aubergine is going to ask to be trained in fighting. Oh, yeah. I thought you already knew something. You know, the clerics I meet out on the road, they're usually... But I'd be happy to. What, what do you have in mind? I just... I want to be tougher. I want to be able to hit things harder. I want to be able to... get myself out of trouble. Uh, dash sort of thinks for a minute. Yeah, I can... I hear where you're coming from, but... And... I'd say this in the best possible way. You might be thinking about this wrong. I, for someone of your stature, it's not all about brute strength and, and toughness, you know? It's about finding the right opportunities. But uh, I think with a little help from Ashara, that seems to be totally in her wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. We'll team up. We'll tag teach. <laughs> you accept this proposal, Aubergine? Oh, yes. Well, when did you want to start? Um, whenever you have free time. Oh, well, you know... There's been a lot of demand on my time these days. You know how it is. <laughs> Hard being popular. Adidas just laughs a little and like, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yesterday then? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what to say next. <laughs> <laughs> say that your uh, your next training session has an extra pupil, and uh, these these sessions now up on the main deck uh, with uh, minstrel training Lyra and Talon and you and Ashara, Ashara kind of splitting her time between the two, um, kind of focusing on all, like the fast, quick strikes and stuff. Um, and now you have Aubergine and uh, Karen under your tutelage. Um, it's getting pretty crowded and kind of rowdy up there during these training hours. Um, a lot of clashing of, of steel and uh, sounds of like grunting and, you know, battle cries and stuff. Lyra, Lyra's working on her battle cry. She has like three or four different ones she's kind of trying out um, before somebody probably reminds her that she's supposed to be working on the stealthy stuff. Maybe, maybe tone it down a bit. Um, that could also take... Uh... Lyra down below decks and work on her Whoa. bow shooting. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she loves that shit. All about it. If Aubergine is interested, I could start hey, her on spear fighting. Be up in the crow's nest a lot, then you're gonna want to shoot real good, right? I already shoot real good, but I'm down to shoot real good or real. Yeah. There's always room for improvement. Right. Hey, wasn't Dad gonna teach her how to like read and write and shit? I think, oh no, he was gonna uh, teach, he was her gonna religion. teach her religion. Yeah. 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 She gotta learn how to read to learn real. No, I guess not. I think she can I read she, already. I assume she Fun knows that. Yeah. That's how most of history learned how to read. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, if there is time with, uh, with her, I'll. Dad will try to teach her some religion, tutelage, you know. Uh, I think as soon as um, 
I mean, there, there's downtime and stuff after maybe around dinner time. Uh, things people people wind down, um, hydrate, refuel. Uh, but I think as she, soon as she sees you approaching, uh, given what you said last night, she <laughs> she's, she just tries to vanish. Like she just kind of like sinks below the table. <laughs> Poor unpopular dad. <laughs> Nobody wants to go to Sunday school when they can learn how to slit somebody's throat. Yeah. Do I see her? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. She, I haven't uh, trained her in I, I reach yet. out with my, <laughs> with, with my big old hand, and I grab the back of her shirt, and I lift her up. Hi, Dad. However high, <laughs> probably like eight feet high, nine feet high. I just go... Now, now, you're only hiding because you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> what am I missing then? Let me tell you about my god. You'll, you'll like him. His name's the Glitter Man. He's a bit of a prankster. Likes to have a lot of fun. I mean, that sounds nice, I guess. Like... I like having fun, and I like pranks. I thought it was all like stuffy, boring stuff. <laughs> well, have you ever met a gnome? These gnomish people are quite something. This god is one of theirs, and they, uh, they're smart, they're wily, they, uh, they just have fun all the time. And just by having fun, you are paying Devotion <laughs> to the glitter man. Huh. Are you still holding her up? Of course. <laughs> yeah. So she just kind of <laughs> hangs there. I could get your eyes, you know. <laughs> Would you kindly reach out your arm? She does. It, it comes nowhere close yeah. to my face. <laughs> she, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I well, maybe not now, but if I had my rapier on me... I'll... I'll be careful. <laughs> Just give me an hour and let me tell you about the good glitter man. Okay. Can you put me back down, though, so I can eat? Absolutely not. You're coming right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, like, looks I'm... wistfully at her plate of food. <laughs> Just... I'll take her away, and, uh, yeah, I'll teach her about the Glitter Man for an hour, and that's it. Okay. Nice forced religion. Yeah, I mean, you, you can tell that she she would she would rather maybe be, you know, she's not as enthusiastic about this as she is about uh, stabbing people, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that bad. She's just like, okay, she's listening, taking it in. Asking inappropriate questions. That kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big yawn. <laughs> Anybody got anything else they want to do today? I'm wondering if White Machine should try and find Dalarak, but I don't think that would be a good idea. Nate's not the kind of person who's going to give you that answer. Yeah. <laughs> you either go for it or you don't. Yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, sure, you can. <laughs> Small ship, you can corner him if you want. <laughs> Isn't he like three times the size of me? Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be Maybe much four. bigger. Four or five. Yeah, more than more than three times for sure. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to corner him. <laughs> well, he could step right over you and walk away, but yeah. you can definitely find him. <laughs> You go for the throat, Aubergine. <laughs> <laughs> Bring uh, a ladder. No, I, think, I think I'll leave it. Okay. All right. Well, you guys, you have your your dinner, your evening um, routine, and uh... no meetings today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, the the signpost that he's been using is empty. The the note's gone. There's. <laughs> this fell. Join us for dinner. No. 
Uh, I guess if we're all at dinner and Fel's not there, if anyone asks about him, Minstrel can let them know. Because it's, uh, yeah. it's like the second day that no one's seen him. Yeah, Adidash asks. So, Fel's not coming to dinner then? Did we really hurt his feelings? Oh, it was nothing we did. He just wants to be alone right now. It. Sorry, he's, can you say that again? He's taken care of. He just wants to be alone until we get back to Salt March. He's got a lot on his mind. Look, if he wants a ship captain, or if we want to be called the fuck em ups, or. Man, I don't care. <laughs> it's. Whatever you guys want, you know? Oh, it's nothing to do with that. Okay. Well, we should get this whole thing with. Oh, shit, what's her name? Lady. Zindris? Yeah, with, uh, with Zindris resolved as soon as we get back to shore. It's... Seems like it's really pressing on him. I'm sure as soon as we make landfall, he'll probably head straight there. Alright. You guys have your, your dinner. Find your way to bed and uh, close off your second and final day at sea uh, on your way back to Salt Marsh. I go to Aubergine's room and knock. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Aubergine, you hear a knock on your door. And they have sex again? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh. Uh, Aubergine just cools out. It's open. I assume we should wait since <laughs> Sim is yeah, on the probably. phone. <laughs> no, you could probably go. It's fine. She's just talking to Grandma. Okay. Um, Dad gently opens the door. Because, uh... Uh, Aubergine, uh, uh, you know, it's the darndest thing. I'm having quite a lot of trouble sleeping this evening, and, uh, you got some time to talk? I got time. Okay, Dad enters the room and gently closes the door behind him. It's, uh... Uh, and looks for a place to sit. <laughs> like, awkwardly, like... Uh, and then just ends up standing in the corner. Uh, <laughs> so, I had the uh, strangest dream the other night, and... Kind of got the... I mean, I got the impression that... Were you that? Were you there... Or yes. was that just part of the whole? Oh, right. Sure. I kind of had a uh, the sense of that. Uh, listen. Uh, and then Dad's voice audibly changes. Listen, um, I don't know what all that means at all. Uh, I, I don't even know what, what God you worship. Everything kind of. Looks away and says, no God in particular, just a respect for life and the circle of life. I 
That doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> what? There is no reason for you to be there. I have killed so many in my life. I have brought destruction. I am a avalanche on the steepest of hills. There is no reason for a believer in life to share the same dream as me, the same space. Aubergine kind of gets a little bit awkward and um, kind of looks to the floor and she says, you're not the only one who's done bad things. I mean, what? You drank too much sacramental wine? While this conversation's happening, Minstrel's going to sneak up to Aubergine's door oh, no. and just sneakily put a sock on the handle and then stealth away. Okay. <laughs> Aubergine um, kind of like keeps shifting and she doesn't really know what to do with her body. And um, she says... Um, I, I was involved in a lot of destruction accidentally, and it involved a lot of loss of life. Hmm. Well... I, my past transgressions were intentional and I enjoyed every moment of it, but I thought I left that life and that God behind, but he was there with us. I felt it. And... Shara was there, and I don't know what this all means. Is it... Is it the promise of balance, or is it... Our... Our past coming to get us? I don't know. To me, it felt like a threat. Like, come up. Yeah. So how do we prepare for something like that? I don't think you can. I, I don't know if we should tell the others or keep it between the three of us. I mean, I don't know if they would understand. No. No. How could they? They couldn't... They wouldn't understand, and... Maybe it was a... one-off thing. We can hope. Okay. Um, well, <sighs> I don't think I'll do a lot of sleeping tonight, but, and absolutely forgive me for saying this, but if I do get to sleep, I really hope I do not see you in my dreams. No offense taken, I, I feel the same. And then Aubergine kind of 
reaches behind her and pulls out a, a wine skin and hands it over. Dad will take a swig and nod and think and hand it back and say, "Thank you. This is this will help a lot." Good night, Aubergine. Good night, Dad. I'll go try to find a place to sleep. Does Dad notice the sock on the door on the way out? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If you turn to shut the door behind you, then yes. Uh... (laughs) I'll just leave it. (laughs) All right. I don't know if Dad knows what it means. Well, the um, night passes. Some of you uh, find better rest than others. And uh, in the morning, you can see the coast uh, peeking over the horizon. And uh, unless there's something else somebody wants to do on the ship before you reach Salt Marsh, we can jump ahead to Port. Sounds like a go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I think. I'm sorry. Added that I should probably spent a little time. She got a throwing spear, the one that she kept from the right. Abbey. Mm-hmm. So she probably is shortening it to a good like four feet. I think that'd be a good height. Mm-hmm. Four and a half. So that's what she does with her, the last few hours on the boat. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so minstrel just went to bed. Really happy, thinking, get him. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like when when your cat brings like one of your socks to the foot of your bed and then just like leaves it there or something? It's just like no, I just meant to prank dad, <laughs> I know. making it look like they were doing something in there. Yep. Uh, Did anyone see the sock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, not, no idea. Not. I mean, I guess it might still be there in the morning. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you prank a tree in the forest and nobody. <laughs> Minstrel knows. It's all that matters. But I assume if it's still there in the morning and then Aubergine is going to come out and see it. <laughs> so has sailing been uh, smooth this whole time? Yeah, there's there haven't been any hiccups or you know no bad weather. You haven't really spotted anything suspicious. Um, no giant octopus. Well, of course yeah. I haven't spotted anything suspicious. <laughs> I've been... I mean, you in general as, as the group. Um... Okay. And then as, as you make your way into Salt Marsh, you know, it's the usual hustle and bustle of merchant ships going in and out, fishing ships, um, casting their, their nets and stuff a little bit off the coast. All right. Well, as soon as I start hearing the jostling and the calls of other people and ships and the working above and fell, put his clothes back on, he'll take his bucket and dump it out the porthole window kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, He'll uh, go and make his way towards the deck. He has stubble on his face. Mm -hmm. He has not shaved. His hair is disheveled. Have you bathed? He looks like, uh, like, like he kind of looks like he got steamed. Okay. Like, uh, like somebody put him in a rice steamer or something. Yeah. And he's kind of just, uh. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Fell. Uh, listen, why don't we go freshen up? I think you don't want to go see Ventress like that. Trust me. This is a horse person telling you this. <laughs> <laughs> so you must look really terrible. Right. Well, um, whatever works for... Uh, Trust me, you'll feel better. I don't have anything to freshen up with. Well, realistically, we've all been at sea for a while and on a dirty island. Perhaps we should all hit the bathhouse. Make a little thing of it. Feels like, right, whatever makes sense to you. And then he steps off the ship into the ocean. (laughs) 
Forgetting he's forgets he doesn't have the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you guys just see and bubbles that coming up from... leans over. <laughs> just bubbles coming up from, from the underneath. I'll take one of my fishing rods and try to... <laughs> hook Val. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you can hook me. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Do I need to roll for fishing? Uh, Put a little cheese on the end of that. You might get it. I think it's safe to say that even if uh, Fel does uh, some what intentionally or not grab onto that hook, uh, it's going to break the line. So the spell water walk does that. Can I cast that on other people? It doesn't say anything about it. Uh, let's take a quick. Should look. be a range on it. So yeah, does it say self or does it say five feet or touch? Oh, it says thirty feet. And you can cast that on anybody. As long as they're within 30 feet of you. Uh, Pretty sure yeah. it does multiple people, too, doesn't it? Yeah. Really? And depending on the spell level. Up, to, up to 10 willing creatures you can see within range. So as long as, I mean, he's below water now, but there might still be a shadow there that, you know, technically. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll lean over the top and cast that on foul. <laughs> All right, so Fel shoots up to the top of the water. Yep. It's he's kind of... completely drenched and just like sagging. <laughs> he's just like um... pulls his hair back a little bit, and he looks up at this guy, and he's like, <sighs> and he looks down at his hands, and he sees no ring on his finger. And he's like, "Well, uh, um, this is a surprising turn of events." Aubergine oh. just cools down. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Aubergine. Hey, Fel, you, uh, you broke my line and you didn't even bring me a fish. Fel checks his pants for fish. Uh, roll for fish and pants. <laughs> <laughs> Was that D100? But you're not going to have 99 fish. <laughs> no, this is for the chance to have. Oh, okay. Anyways, I'll just roll it. That's a 79. You have a fish in your boot. There's a, there's a minnow. There's a little yeah. little tiny fish in your boot. Fel, Fel, Fel chucks the world's smallest fish up at you. Yeah. Oh my god, Dad just crushed it in his <laughs> fish. <laughs> little tiny snack for you there. <laughs> oh my god. The Cheetos like, of the right. sea. Well, that's all good. Uh... I'm washed up now. I'll be heading out. And he starts walking across the water. Just through the through the little like inlet that we're at. Like okay. it's like a little bay or something. And he uh he walks straight towards the quartermasters of loose. Alright. I think I machine would turn to the group and say, someone needs to go after him. <laughs> uh, all right, well, no no problem. <laughs> So, Adidash jumps over the side of the boat. <laughs> wet. Comes back up. I guess that's just part of how we do it. Walks after him. All right. The uh, talent's like there's ropes and <laughs> the the ship has made. You've, you've found your way to the the, the docks, and um, they are pulling up the 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 ramp and stuff so that you can get on and off easily. In um, Kind of not your usual spot i mean it's kind of come and go and take first come first serve so you're actually a little bit closer to the quartermasters than usual um there's a tavern right at the the, the i keep forgetting the name of it but it's that really shitty one that you guys went to like your first night in town and that Belen returned to to talk to one of the sneaky rogue people um one of my so underground contexts yeah uh so there's there's the usual chaos um spilling out of it um you can hear shouting and music and stuff inside and there's people coming and going um it's early afternoon like 11 a.m ish um i guess that's before noon but whatever um and yeah bell and adidash have have headed off what do the rest of you do i'm going to the bathhouse okay yeah i think i'm gonna join them that. okay Dad? Uh, 
Uh, I guess. I doesn't really care about getting a bag. <laughs> um. I don't know. What what would be good for Dad to do? He goes and uh, goes shopping. Oh, you could get a new new fishing line. <laughs> oh yes, I definitely need new fishing line. So yeah, I'm gonna go shopping for um, fishing line and other actually like other furniture and knickknacks and stuff to decorate the boat. Just kind of class it up a bit. Okay, I mean you can basically decide how much money you want to spend on that, and then that will determine how classy everything is. Uh, before everyone leaves, Mitch will just be like, everyone meet at the quartermaster shop when you're finished. Yeah, Adidas needs to borrow some money from Dad before she leaves. Because <laughs> there's <laughs> that, if, if we end up getting that, that potion or scroll or whatever it was that Ventress was going to write. Uh, no, no, uh, Adidas, I think you've... Uh... We've already talked about this, Dad. I thought I gave you allowance for the month. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you need? I don't know. I'll let you know afterwards. <laughs> I'll bring back the change. <laughs> okay, how much are you asking for? Just give, give me all of it, and I'll bring you a bet slip. <laughs> Hang on, how, where's my money at? Uh, oh, okay. But I'm buying... I, okay, I give... God damn You're it. loaded, come on. <laughs> I'm not actually that loaded. Um, 250 gold. Perfect. Okay. To you. I'm going to spend the same amount getting accoutrement. <laughs> no, accoutrements for the boat. Nice. But yeah, or you... actually, can uh, and also yeah, look, look, at... for, look for a masthead <laughs> as well. Or, uh, you know, the front. Yeah, you, you can definitely commission somebody to come out and, and uh, you know, put a custom masthead on your ship for that price. Um, figurehead? Yeah, sorry. Fig figurehead, figure not head. masthead. That yeah. was my bad. <laughs> um, there are plenty of artisans in town um, to choose from. A lot of volunteers. If you go How much would that cost? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, like, maybe 100 gold for... I mean, it depends how how fine you want the craftsmanship you get what you pay for but 100 gold will give you a pretty pretty good one okay 100 gold for that and 150 just to get furnishings for the boat okay yeah so uh you can you can do it up pretty much however you want with that money um and uh we can think about it a bit if you want and and uh describe it when people come back um Fell, you made a beeline for Zendra's shop. The other two have gone off to the bathhouses. Uh, it's a typical bathhouse. You go there, you get clean, you come out clean. Um, but Fell, and then Adadash, you're um, maybe a minute or so behind him because of the, the money exchange. Uh, so Fell, you reach the faithful quartermasters of Luz and the shop you had so frequently visited with fondness and excitement is closed the doors locked and the windows are shuttered uh knock it down you want to break in the door yeah okay make a strength check uh, okay that's not how i would have done it but isn't that how breaking down doors works no i was gonna use like eldritch blast oh okay well then make, roll your attack <laughs> Uh, it's a 18 to hit the door. Okay, roll damage. Uh, okay. Technically, I fire two Eldritch Blasts, so that's an, also a 19. Uh, that's a 1 and a 7 plus 10, so 18 damage to the door. Yeah, the door just splinters open as the force of these crashes into it. Um, inside is dark and quiet. I assume you go in? Yeah, yeah, I go in. Can I look around and make sure nobody heard the large 
Oh, people Correct. definitely <laughs> heard. There was there was an enormous splintering, shattering sound as the door flew inward, and um, fell disappears inside as mm. as you come up the street, um, and people out and about are kind of looking between each other and some. And there's shouting like "Hey, hey!" and somebody runs off. Um, Ah, oh, shit. I, uh, pick up my pace. I'm gonna run for the quartermaster. Alright, so, fell inside. Um, you can see that the interior of this, the shop has been picked clean. There's just bare walls and floors greeting you as you force your way in. Um. So they've just cleared shop. At, yeah, looking around just, at, just as you step over the threshold. It, it looks barren. Like furniture's gone, everything? Yeah. Mm. There's the counter. They were quick to get out of town. Yeah, fella, we'll walk and walk back to the area where Zendris usually goes back to. Yeah, so get her shit. behind the counter, there's the... The storeroom, essentially, there was a tapestry covering it, or a curtain, um, that she would disappear behind. Um, that's gone, so you can see inside. Um, as you approach the counter, she steps out from the storeroom. Uh, in her traveling clothes, tight black trousers below a loose ivory blouse, with her dark hair pulled up around her horns and kind of falling down her back in a single braid. And um, he just uh, looks at you, says, I know what you're thinking. Quickly things change. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Phil. We barely got to know each other. But duty calls, and my people have their justice. Gelden and his like will never exploit us again. It's furious, I'm sure, and I'm sorry if that complicates your relationship with the council. You no know, salt marsh has its own troubles now. You're in the thick of them. Best of luck, darling. She kind of pauses. And down. I don't imagine this will buy your friendship. But I did leave a token worth far more than what Gellin promised you beneath the counter. I hope this will at least soothe your more business-minded companion. As for what happened on the aisle, take no pleasure in it. Suffering and death must be just, must be called for. A dear old abbot reached for powers he didn't understand in his panic. I'm sure he's getting his due wherever he is now. As for your powers, you poor. So much darkness, you understand so little of you can find it in yourself to forgive me for my deceit. Come find me. We'll learn what you're capable of together. I'll know. And I'll be waiting. And Fel, be careful who you are. And she vanishes. Fel dips behind the counter, sees what's underneath. Uh... It's a counter. The the sh the the shelves underneath it um, appear to be empty. So there's nothing there. You can make an investigation check. Sure. That's a natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you poke around and and you don't see anything, and it's just. A, infuriating or, or you know whatever you're feeling just intensifies as and you you kick the counter and it moves a bit I just shove it the rest of the way it topples and kind of cracks a bit as it hits the ground and beneath it there is a little hole in the the floorboards with a little box Sitting right in there. I'll pick it up. Won't even check for traps or anything. You pick it up. 
Mm. You're holding its... You know. Alright, I'll open it. Uh, inside is a little ear, or incandescent blue sphere. And it kind of sparks and cracks like there's light flashing inside. Okay. Uh, I'll pick it up out of the box and see if there's an instruction manual. It's just a stone in a box. You don't and, uh, see anything else. I crane my head outside the door, looking for people who are running towards us and say, uh, Fell. Yeah, there's... Sorry about that, but maybe we should uh, get going. Take a look at that some place more discreet. Uh, you made kind of a ruckus out there. Sal just takes it and puts it into his bag, back, puts it back in its box, closes it gently, puts it back in the bag, and he looks over at uh, Adidash, and you can see he's got tears in his eyes. But they are burning. Just like, well, I guess we need to go report to Galen that we were unsuccessful in our mission, and um, save that. And Side then I'll buy you a there. drink. Might be inclined to accept. Come on, let's go out the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as you had peered out the front, you had seen that there were some guards rushing from down the street um, and people kind of hanging back, like, watching to see what was going on. So you head out the back, um, skirt your way around, um, reemerge on the street several buildings down. Where are you guys going? I'm letting Fel lead. Mm. He's having a rough moment right now. If he wants to go straight to the tavern, that's one thing. Oh, uh, shit. By the way, uh, Minstrel told us to meet him here. I don't know if that's such a good idea now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a little sign that you could leave for him? Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I could do something about that. Um. Actually, I don't have anything that's gonna last that long. <laughs> Let's disappear into the crowd, and I guess when we see people. I mean, you guys probably have time mm -hmm. to go to the bathhouse okay. and get us, because we're gonna be there for like half an hour. All of that took yeah. like five okay. minutes. So I tell Phil that's where Oh, okay. Very well. Um, I think the blown up door will probably tell them that's not a good place to stick around. Uh, well, if you wanted to go meet Gellin with them, I think that might be a good idea. Let's... Oh, I see no reason to go see him right away. Right, let's gather up. Let's uh, discuss what just happened. Come up with a plan. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Hey, Fel, do you like the bagpipes? Um, unfamiliar with any bags that have pipes. Uh, oh, okay. Some sort of torture device. I've, I've heard that. <laughs> uh, forget it. Just a nice hot bath. That's, that's the ticket, I think, right now. Sure. You make your way and, to the bathhouse. Oh, Adidash kind of punches him in the shoulder, like a... Buddy! <laughs> Alright, he, he, he flies across the street. <laughs> collapses into a pile of... No, I don't know, how hard do you hit him? <laughs> Not hard, just it was awkward. It was an awkward tap. Yeah, he still bruises, but yeah. <laughs> Probably. You make your way to the bathhouse, where you find uh, your other companions couple of them um hanging out getting clean there are there's there's like a communal 
area where people can go and then there's like little private sort of washrooms with like a basin and like a you know, towel or sponge kind yeah. of thing um, Val just walks and sits in I guess there's like probably a reception area or something or uh sort of yeah um I mean you walk in and the, the baths are kind of right there um but there's oh so can I see them bathing or something or there's got to be some sort of well, to see. the the communal bath is just kind of right there the people are not generally very shy about it at least of this particular class right. um, do i see a, uh do i see a cat just licking themselves somewhere around here or... uh, they have my own yeah, so area i guess or whatever there are... i don't do communal baths <laughs> <laughs> there are like i said private washrooms kind of just lining each side so uh oh, okay well i'll just stand in front of the uh, communal bathing area looking left and right waiting to see aubergine and menstrual and Datarak, who I as far as I knew was also here what do you stop stop that is a mouse you okay that's kind of what you do all right um, can't tell a cat not to attack a mouse yeah so I think uh, you know after however long it takes you guys do come out of your rooms and find Fel standing by the door yeah, so Fel just waits there until they come out, and he says, we'll need to find a new place to sell our shit. Oh? Adidas has been standing awkwardly behind him this whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, um, kind of, uh, yeah. Was she Bad there? Bad news on that front. Kind of. And so she was in on it then? I, I say, yeah, she. Uh, we got there and the place had been cleaned out. Well, I guess we need to have a little chat with Galen and see what the hell he did down there to piss off so many people. I'm very keen to find out myself. Well, let's get freshened up, get some food, find wherever Dad went, <laughs> and then we'll head over there later this afternoon. Very well. I'll be on the ship whenever you're already meeting there. Yeah, I'll say if 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 that's what you guys want to do, um, you that's exactly what happens. You finish getting cleaned up, have some lunch, you meet back uh, on the ship, find find Dad after he's done his shopping. He's he's probably back tidying things up, um, putting things you know in the middle of his redecorating. Uh, as, I'm as only going to assume he bought an actual bed for himself. <laughs> Yeah, and I think with nope. no, <laughs> not for dead. Uh, uh, I think I think right now everything that I bought is on its way to be delivered here. Okay. So I got some small things that I'm setting up, but the big stuff's coming pretty soon. Okay. I was I just mean, gonna say, fifty gold will get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can probably get a bed for like fifteen gold. <laughs> Is there anywhere that I could nice buy a weapon? Uh, magic weapons were kind of Zendris's forte. Yeah. Um, there is a blacksmith yeah. that would have, like, just sort of general, normal weapons. I'll join you for that, if you don't mind, Aubergine. No, I don't uh, nobody mind. knows weapons like I know weapons. Except maybe a blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just wondering if I could get something better than the mace. Or a better mace, I should say. Yeah, as, as far as you... And you've been around Salt Marsh you know, enough to know that if you wanted something enchanted, Zendris was the best bet. So, for the moment. Okay. Uh, Dad will walk up to Talon and... In the palm of his hand, he has a huge fucking hat. <laughs> and he just slams it down on Talon's head. <laughs> Talon just kind of crumples a bit, and 
Oh, uh, thank you. My mighty fine hat. Good, good choice. There you go. Now you look the part, and uh, I hope you feel the part as well, because that is a uh, captainly hat. Yeah, I, f I feel I feel more captainly already. Yeah, Fel right. passes by him on the ship and is heading by, and he just glances at him and says, Captain. And just keep <laughs> <laughs> Talon kind of grins a little bit. Well, don't just stand there. Get to the helm, man. Right. I, I, well, and, and don't you just stand there. Don't you have work to do? This is my ship. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's about time for a nap. I've got a lot of shopping today. All oh, right, off, off duty then, soldier. Uh, uh, have a good nap. <laughs> and he just goes and. <laughs> so after your lunch, you guys want to go see Gellin? Did you want to do more shopping? Well, I, I think we'll uh, probably go see Galen. I thought that would happen after on next session or something because it's three. We have yeah, a couple we... minutes. Oh, okay. So I wanted to see what y'all were going to do. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, if everybody's ready, then Fel's just waiting to go to Galen's. He hasn't eaten Sad. anything. He hasn't cleaned up. He just... Stinky. Stinky, stinky <laughs> boy. We could see if our coalition contact is still in town and talk to him first. Oh, yeah. Before seeing Galen. Because if we're going to accuse him of some shit, might want to clear it first. <laughs> yeah, let's let's see if uh, D Dipsy Meduda, whatever his name is. It's been so long since we talked to him. It's like yeah, I don't even know if he's still here. Something. No. Yeah, What's his name? Aladain Mar. You know Aladdin. that, you know, in the past he has reached out to you guys through um, sending or message, some kind of magical means. Um, you have arranged that there is like a drop spot in town where you could leave a message if you needed to get in touch with him between meetings. All right, well, we'll do that. Okay. Um, you know, it'll probably take some time before he gets back to you. Cool, we're not talking to Gal until that's done, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll end our session there. <laughs> One last thing. Yeah. Minstrel's going to swing by his underworld contact. Okay. And let him know he has a line on some very rare, unique wine. Very limited edition. He seems very <laughs> interested. <laughs> He's like, like me and will never going. exist again. <laughs> There's only 10 bottles, maybe nine bottles. <laughs> in all of existence yeah he he uh he's definitely interested in this he wants to see them and he and you know he's gonna arrange like a tasting or something. i'm sure we could find it. well i don't think we'll be doing a tasting these are very limited okay more cook, cook. you can whiff it okay. but no tasting okay it'll only increase the value if you use one <laughs> but uh I could I could bring one by. I'll bring one by later today. So you have that lined up? Yep. Any other final notes? Uh no, Fell's just sitting in his little hidey hole and he's got that <laughs> little blue sparky gem. And he's just checking it out, turning it over in his hand. Okay. Are you trying to learn anything about it, or just... I mean, yeah, sure. I'll try to investigate it a bit. Yeah, Arcana? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not gonna, like, identify this thing. I, so... We lost our identifier person. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not good. Minstrel gets back, and, you know, with, with Fel not around, I sort of let him know that uh, Ventress left something in a box. I didn't quite see what it was. It was for Fel, but anyway, you know more about magic items than I do. I thought you might be cute. It might be good for you to know. All right, I'll keep an eye out. Uh, I rolled an eight. Yeah, you have you have no idea what this is. <laughs> it's a rock. Uh, you can you can feel that there's some power in it. It feels 
He didn't just leave you a rock. It is a magical rock. Stone, no. it's a spear. But is it a 10,000 gold magical rock? <laughs> she said it was worth more. Well, but well, you have no idea what it is. All right, well, put it back in his little... The, well, I'll just keep staring at it for a while. And... And once Minstrel gets back to the boat, he's going to uh, just approach Aubergine and be like, just so you know, I may have lined up a buyer for that wine. I got to bring one by later so they can check it out. But don't drink it all, because we could get a lot of money for it. <laughs> Aubergine kind of looks at him a little bit funny and says, I won't drink it. <laughs> Perfect. Just keep it safe. <laughs> Okay. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, well, we'll wrap things up there and continue next Saturday.